Okay, Minnesota. We've talked about Minnesota quite a bit the past few days. Talking about JT Miller and Kevin Fiala and the trade rumors and all that. But today we're focusing on a player that isn't on the Minnesota Wild. In fact, he is on the Iowa Wild, the AHL team of the Minnesota Wild. And he has been going out there with a season for the ages when it comes to U21 AHL scores. You know who exactly we're talking about based off the title and the thumbnail of this video. We're talking today about Minnesota Wild drafted prospect ninth overall in the 2020 NHL entry draft, Marco Rossi, the 5'9 center from Austria who made himself a super huge impact in the OHL before getting drafted by the Wild. Now, even though he was one of the older players of the 2020 NHL Draft, you could not deny the amount of talent that this guy had. 120 points, 56 games played, 39 goals in the OHL, he was the top CHL point producer in 2019-20, and as a result, he was seen as this super highly touted, super skilled, super polished, super effective NHL caliber center who could have been NHL ready as soon as that next season. Now, unfortunately, because of the virus, he had a very serious health complication that almost prohibited his ability to live, and we all wished for a speedy recovery as well as an eventual return to the game of hockey, and that's exactly what we have had. The Wild Collective fanbase has been super excited for Marco Rossi in just trying to project what exactly he could be upon his return. Okay, he almost died, so... Let's give him a little bit of a pass. If he goes out to the AHL, he doesn't really do all too well. That's going to be fine. It takes a while for the body to readjust after getting the virus in some circumstances. But fortunately for Marco Rossi, it seems like everything is up to snuff. Now, sure, he's not playing in the NHL right now. He's in Iowa. But what he's shown off at the AHL level has been so above and beyond great that the only statistical comparables we have for Marco Rossi are names that, uh, yeah, they're really good hockey players. So, we should go ahead and take a look at this, shouldn't we? Marco Rossi, as a 5'9", 183-pound center. Man, I didn't realize he was that heavy already. He's got himself 14 points in 11 Iowa Wild games, and if you go over to the Wild point production in general, he is the top guy on the team, and he has a few games that he missed. So even though he hasn't played every game, he's gone out there with 14 points in 11 markers so far, so really good to see him go out there with the point production. If you go over and watch the tape, you can see that Rossi is doing the same things that he did in the OHL, creating pockets of space for himself, just controlling the play so dynamically, and never really panicking. That was one of the biggest aspects of Marco Rossi's game in the O, was that even though he was super skilled, he was super flashy when he needed to be, he never panicked. He was always out there with a calm frame of mind that allowed him to pretty much just possess every shift he was out there with such such ease and elegance. He's not afraid to hold on to the puck in the offensive zone, and if somebody goes out there and tries to challenge him, he'll do a little whoop de doo get right past you, and continue with what it is he's trying to accomplish. He's so good at just creating pockets of space. He can dangle the puck on a string if he really needs to, but he doesn't use it often. He only really does that when it's necessary, which is another part of his game that I really do appreciate. While he only has three goals in 11 games on the year so far, he's actually got a really good shooting ability. It's just his playmaking ability is even better. So, yeah, I mean, even in his OHL season, he had 81 assists in 56 games played. This guy just knows how to find guys through traffic. And in fact, even off the puck, you can still see that Marco Rossi in the AHL is doing everything that he needs to be doing to be a successful off-puck hockey player. He gets to the right areas, he slips into the cracks, and he's able to handle passes that his teammates throw towards him when he is all alone in open pockets of ice. He's just such an effective and smart player that... He only dropped because he's 5'9". Like, if this guy was six feet tall, he probably would have gone somewhere in the top three, if not top two. Like, he is that gosh darn good, and for Marco Rossi to have all the complications that he did and slow him down for the year that he had, it was just so unfortunate that now, seeing him in the AHL, doing his thing with the Wild, it is fantastic. If you look at the game log for Marco Rossi, he has only gone pointless in two games that he had. The game recently against the Tucson Roadrunners, that was a 2-1 Iowa Wild loss. The only goal was scored by Matt Boldy, assisted by Kyle Rowe and John Lazotte. And then the first game of the season against the Texas Stars, he also went pointless there. 
in every other game in between, Marco Rossi had himself at least one point, cementing his season so far with a nine-game point streak wherein he achieved those 14 points. That's pretty good, and in fact, if you take a look at some of the games that he had, hey, he's getting seven shots in a game. He did that twice, and you take a look at what he's been doing in the previous games he has played, the three most recent games that Rossi has had, he's had three shots, so... Really good for him to see the consistency getting on the board with creating offense, and sure, even though he's not scoring, he's still going out there and getting those chances. In fact, if you go over to this tweet over here by Byron Bader, Marco Rossi, this is actually from a few days ago, so I apologize, Rossi, Jacob Perot, and Jack Quinn currently have the 5th, 6th, and ninth highest single-season point-per-game rates of U21 AHL players to play 10-plus games since the 04-05 season, just behind the likes of Getzlov, Perry, Radulov, and Kucherov. And if you go over to the actual production list, this is what it is today. Ryan Getzlav, Corey Perry, Radulov, Kucherov, these guys are indeed up there. Then you have Foodie, Ryan Strom, Talusti, Boldy, Eberly, and Marco Rossi is down here at 10th overall with a 1.27 points per game. Now, this company right here on this list is pretty good, but Marco Rossi did go pointless in his previous game against Tucson. If you remove the recent game that he had, and you bring his total up to 14 points in 10 games played instead, Marco Rossi then gets a 1.4 points per game instead of the 1.27 he's equipped with today, which puts him just behind Kucherov, Radulov, Perry, and Getzlov, and above everybody else that we talked about here too. So, one game of Rossi going pointless pointless kind of messed up the entire calculation over here, but still, being in the same company that he is in right now, being just around there with Logan Couture and Trevor Zegras of last year, it is a very good sign. Pelche and Jack Quinn are two other guys that are doing extraordinarily well for the Buffalo and Anaheim farm systems as well. Or did I mess that one up? It's Anaheim and Buffalo, the other way around. Yeah, something like that. These two guys are great prospects in their own right, but we're not really talking about them here in this video. It's mostly about Rossi. This guy is going to go out there and he's going to make himself an impact. Now, whether or not Rossi goes out there and actually gets a game this season, or not a game, but a few couple of games, if he actually makes the regular Minnesota Wild team and sustains a spot in that lineup, that's up for debate because... The way the roster works out right now, Marco Rossi is still on his ELC, and the Wild would have the right to actually keep Rossi on that ELC for an extended year, should they limit him to not having nine games played in the NHL this year. So, with the Wild and their cap crunch coming up with a whole bunch of guys expiring in the next few seasons, it probably would be a little bit more of a smarter move to keep a guy like Rossi on his entry-level deal longer and not burn off that year with the nine games. So, who knows if Rossi is going to go out there and even play an extended rule with the Minnesota Wild this season. But at this point, I don't really think there's any wrong decision here. Like, he is very clearly good enough, in my opinion, to play NHL hockey. I believe that back in 2020. But just seeing what happened to him, the health complications, and now the fact that he's in the AHL and actually doing pretty well... You could either say, A, okay, screw the entry-level deal, we're gonna go ahead and play you because you're good and you're ready right now, or you could say, all right, let's just ease it in. Like, not really try to force you because we're still an okay team in the NHL standings, we're doing all right. The Minnesota Wild right now, as I record this video, they are first in the gosh darn central with 25 points in 19 games played. So, we're a good team, we're doing fine, we don't necessarily need you to be on this team right now. You can go out there, fix yourself up, dominate the AHL, get that confidence back, play a full season of hockey after almost dying and coming back, and we can reap the benefits of having you on an entry-level contract for one more year. If Marco Rossi goes out there and shatters worlds in the AHL, maybe he wins the point-scoring race in that league, I don't know. It's possible, but of course more needs to happen for that to occur. And then next season, Marco Rossi comes into the NHL and he continues to be the monster that he is, despite only being 5'9", then that would be the best case scenario for the Minnesota Wild. Having a guy like Marco Rossi suiting up alongside of JT Miller and Kirill Kaprizov. Oh, I can't believe I just said that, man. I hate myself. All right, talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Marco Rossi and the way he has performed so far? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about the comparables to Getzlav, Perry, Kucherov, Radulov. What are your opinions? on how Rossi has played, how does he compare to these players, and where do you see him lining up in the future, short-term and long-term? Okay, long-term, he's probably going to be a Minnesota Wild guy, but short-term, this season, where does he finish off the year? Is it in the AHL? Is it in the NHL? What is the status here? Talk to me in the comments, all your thoughts, I hope you enjoyed this video.
and bye.